The fight to keep Asian carp from entering the Great Lakes has taken another turn. A U.S. Supreme Court case that could see the closure of the Chicago Canal. But that decision will not be made lightly considering its economic impact to the region. Here's a look at some of the developments of this story and where we sit now. Once they're in, they're very difficult, if not impossible, to eradicate. On a, on a per numbers basis, these fish can get up to over 100 pounds per fish. It will have a very significant impact, especially on the recreational fishery as well as the commercial fishery. The introduction of Asian carp in the United States originally had a purpose. In 1972, big head carp were stocked in aquaculture farms with the intention of controlling algae in ponds. But because of flooding in 1994, the carp were able to escape and spread throughout the Mississippi Basin. Since then, their growth has seen a steady increase. In some parts of Illinois, Asian carp make up more than 90% of the fish population. There are four species of Asian carp, the grass carp, the black carp, the silver carp, and the big head carp. Uh, two of them, the silver carp and the big head carp, are adjacent uh, to the city of Chicago. This fish is uh, a large fish. They can grow up to 100 pounds, and they'll consume 20 to 40 percent of their body weight in food per day. So they are very voracious. They, they eat and eat and eat. Um, the young actually within about one year grow to be too large for our native uh, predator species to actually consume. And so as soon as they get ahead of our uh, fish, the native fish in the Great Lakes, they can outcompete them very easily. They have no natural predators in most instances once they're in the Great Lakes. So once they get in, they outcompete native species for food, for places to, to reproduce, uh, and for security and safety, places to live, things like that. So we need to make sure the, the best policy on invasive species is to keep them from coming in in the first place. Once they're in, they're very difficult, if not impossible, to eradicate. A hundred years ago, they opened a waterway from Lake Michigan to the uh, Illinois River. It's called the Chicago Ship and Sanitary Canal. And the intention was to try and prevent human disease, typhoid and cholera, which was rampant in Chicago 100 years ago. And it was because they were simply dumping their waste uh, into the river and people were being exposed to it. By opening this link to the Great Lakes, um, it flushed the water down into the Mississippi. It re dramatically reduced the incidence of uh, both of those diseases, so it worked remarkably well. Uh, but unfortunately, what it now means is that we have a conduit between the Mississippi River Basin and the Great Lakes Basin. And so if a species comes into one basin, it can now swim through this canal and get into the other basin, whereas 100 years ago they couldn't do that. It was evident that any aquatic link between the Mississippi River and the Great Lakes needed to be protected. In 2002, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers completed an electrical fish barrier in the Chicago Ship Canal, with a second barrier being built in 2004. There's tremendous concern that we're going to see silver carp and big head carp move up through this ship canal, uh, through the city of Chicago and into Lake Michigan. And as a result, the U.S. authorities have built two different uh, electrical barriers to try and zap the fish not to kill them, but to alter their behavior so that as they're being shocked, they will turn around and swim back from whence they came. With an invasion into the Great Lakes on the horizon, a joint partnership formed between Canada and the United States. In 2009, poisoning a section of the Chicago Canal became the next step to stop Asian carp from entering Lake Michigan. Uh, the fish poison was dumped in and kills all of the fish in an area from the electric barrier in Chicago in the uh, sanitary and shipping canal down to the Lockport uh, Locks, which is about a six-mile stretch of uh, river. Everything in that uh, stretch um, dies, as far as the fish goes, and then needs to be removed because uh, it doesn't, you don't want it floating down the river, and it does contain this chemical, and put into a dump site. So they're expecting about a quarter of a million pounds of fish to be pulled out of that uh, zone. But as we speak, uh, they've only found one carp in that area right now, physical fish. We were involved with the, uh, the U.S. government when there was the uh, road to toad that was done. We had a couple of folks there, the federal folks from uh, the, uh, Canada were there as well. We committed some dollars towards this as well. The U.S. Supreme Court has seen pressure from several U.S. states escalate in an attempt to force a closure of the Chicago Canal, which could go a long way in stopping the migration of the Asian carp into the Great Lakes. Ontario recently made its allegiance known by supporting the move. Well, the first thing we can do is what we did do, and that is actually come out and support the state of Michigan in their proposal December 31st, 2009, to the Supreme Court, and that we did. 
Now, whether or not the court will allow us, the Supreme Court of the United States will allow us to actually be a friend of the court, we won't know. But at least the public knows that we are as deeply concerned as the state of Michigan is about this very invasive fish coming into the Great Lakes. Asian carp and whether or not they get into the Great Lakes is, is going to keep depending on just how vigilant and active these agencies are. The Illinois Department of Natural Resources, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, the Fish and Wildlife Service, the list goes on. We've got some of the most competent agencies in the world that are working day and night to try to make sure that Asian carp do not migrate further up the Chicago waterway system and get into Lake Michigan. We know it's important to Canada as well that the Great Lakes are shared uh, with uh, the neighbors to the north and it's a, it's a real joint effort. And this, I think, is a good faith uh, start by the United States to really up the ante and uh, to show that we're very serious south of the border in bringing the Great Lakes back to life. We follow this very closely. Uh, we're again con committed to work very closely with all of the Great Lakes states, Wisconsin, Ohio, um, Michigan in particular, where they're going and have taken the lead and we say kudos to them and thankful that they are doing this. We will work with them and follow them and do whatever we can to keep the carp out of the Great Lakes.